A new wind farm went into operation just outside of Nome at the end of last year, but local leaders are confronting a series of challenges in keeping the turbines spinning. From KNOM in Nome, Jesse Zink reports. The wind farm on Banner Peak just north of Nome went up in about six months of construction last year, with financing from both the Bering Straits and Sitnesok Native Corporations. At the time, it was hailed as an example of what renewable energy could do for rural areas of the state. But the turbines were shut down at the end of May. Western Community Energy Project Manager Ian Graham says the problem was in Turbine 1. We monitored the production and performance. The performance was starting to degrade and we were starting to scratch our heads and look at all the systems. And then it decoupled, which means the generator had become decoupled from the drivetrain. The same turbines have been used in Kotzebue for a decade. Graham says the problem was not Gnome's weather, but a manufacturing defect in a large group of turbines. It's really a batch issue and not a climate issue. Now, what happened in Gnome is that it, the problem became more evident because we had higher wind loads. So it was easier to identify the problem, but the problem is really in that entire batch of, wind, of turbines. The turbines were manufactured by Integrity Wind, a Canadian company that has about 130 of its 50 kilowatt turbines in use around the world. When Graham spoke with Integrity about the problem, Integrity CEO Jim Heath told him to shut down all 18 turbines. It wasn't a safety issue at all. It was simply a wear issue. And as a manufacturer, you want to you know, make sure you start off right just for purposes of preventive maintenance. We shut it down. I thought that was a conservative approach. I actually think I ought to be applauded for that. In order for the wind farm to restart, Integrity needs to produce a specialized part for the turbines. In the meantime, Heath has promised to reimburse Banner Wind for the revenue lost during the shutdown. But the wind industry has been hit hard by the economic slowdown and Integrity has encountered serious financial problems. They've sent workers home and have been ordered by a provincial labor board in Canada to pay its employees months of back wages. Heath blames the federal stimulus bill for his company's troubles and says he's confident the company can meet all its obligations. The market kind of stopped. Not so much, I don't think, because of the recession and the credit crisis, but more because of the announcement of the stimulus bill. And many, many, many of our customers, people that wanted equipment, decided they were going to wait for their stimulus money and they weren't using their own. So cash became very tight. We have been suffering a liquidity issue, but I don't think I have any issues with respect to the banner project. My my intention is to honor all of our obligations to the project. The Prince Edward Island provincial government is currently exploring options to prop up the company until it can find additional financing. Heath says he's confident he can find the necessary cash in the next few weeks. But that still leaves 18 turbines shut down outside of Nome. Project manager Graham says his company is prepared to step in if Integrity can't do the job. And if we come up against a time constraint, meaning we're running out of build season, we'll go out and reverse engineer and manufacture them then third party. So there's a backup plan there to really get things re-engaged. Banner Wind says it's hopeful the turbines will be spinning again before the snow flies in Nome. In the meantime, wind farm owners and Nome Joint Utility Service are still negotiating a power sales agreement to get the energy into Nome's transmission lines. In Nome, I'm Jesse Zink.